I think we are finally live. Oh my gosh, I hate when things don't go as planned when I get started. Let me make sure we've got volume here. Give me a second before we get going. Come on, load. Maybe, maybe we'll just sit here. Finally live. There we go. Okay, looks like we are good. Oops, just mute, don't. Let me refresh this really quick. I will pop out the chat window and we can get started. Now, just like last time, I think we got through maybe 20 or 30 critiques last time. I'm not gonna get through everybody's. There were hundreds of comments on this post over in our, our group. So, and that is where I'm pulling these critiques from is from our art group. So um, don't get mad if yours doesn't get critiqued. You can still get tons of tips that you can apply to your own work. So let's go ahead, um, I'm gonna hold this chat and I'm not going to be answering a lot of questions during the chat because if I do I'm not going to get any critiques done we are just going to jump right into that and focusing on that so let me get that going and pull up Photoshop this is where my problem was earlier the um where did my chat go the Photoshop pen, my Wacom tablet pen, it wasn't recognizing the Wacom tablet really at all. So I had, it was just using it as a monitor. So I had to restart and this computer is so slow to restart. So this is the first piece we're gonna be looking at today. This one comes from, who does this come from? This one comes from Laura Beavis. She said, this is a recent commission I did. I would love to be able to get an even more realistic look, even when it's full body like this. Also, for sure need advice on the background. This was done with colored pencils, polychromos, and luminance using Zestit to blend it. It's in a 14 by 11 Stonehenge paper. Okay, so this is what's interesting. I wanna start off by looking at that reference photo. Holy crap, did you improve on this reference photo? Like, I mean, her eyes are closed. You, how, how, I'm impressed. How did you even make this look like that much better? Cause you actually made it look like here, the dog is standing you made it look like he's laying in the grass in your artwork. And I do think that's a huge improvement. I might have opened his eyes up. But then again, I mean, you were. this is not a, a reference photo. I personally, like I, if somebody commissioned me for this, I'd be like, nope, you need to get another photo. So it's very impressive that you were able to take this and get what you got out of it. So that is really good just right off the bat. Um, but I mean, with a photo like this, you can only expect it to be so good. You were extremely limited by this photograph um and and just talking about taking commissions kind of backing up a little bit things that will make me say no to a commission in this case her eyes are closed i'm not going to mess with that um they're not going to get my super realistic quality and have it look like exactly like that person i mean it'll look like her eyes are open but it won't necessarily look like her eyes that are open if i don't have that photograph the dog's eyes are closed the positioning of the dogs the dog's got you know his eyes and all of that these are all things that i would look at and say get me something else um but like i said you took this and you you vastly improved on that so i really like let's start with the grass i like what you did with the grass now if we go around the edges you can see that the edges you didn't quite take the colored pencil all the way around the edge you can kind of see that white border but when you mat this you're not going to see those anyway so that's okay except look where you signed it you signed it way down at this bottom corner if you put a mat over this that your signature is going to get covered so keep that in mind when you guys sign your artwork raise it up a little bit like where the word laura is is fine but your last name is going to get chopped by that mat so that's definitely something just to keep in mind so let's talk about the art itself now you said you wanted something that looked more realistic the main reason this doesn't look super realistic it's not your drawing your drawing is actually really really good the things that make this not look so realistic are there's no there's not much in the way of shadows so we definitely want to spend some more time on that let's see um so let's look really let's look at skin tones really quickly so her skin now and i talk about this all the time there's no set skin tone but her skin is very almost grayish you've used the browns and the creams but you didn't use any of your pinks and reds every skin tone it doesn't matter if they're indian it doesn't matter if they're black it doesn't matter if they're asian white it doesn't matter you're going to use reds and like the kaput mortem color with your your polychromos is a good one it's kind of this nice muted um 
bur- not burgundy. It's like a magenta ish. That's but it's muted. It's so perfect for skin tones. You're gonna have pinks in there. You're gonna have a lot of other colors. So that's definitely something to keep in mind when you are mixing skin tones. Doesn't matter what type of skin tone that person has. You will almost always want to include those red colors. The all all of those other colors. The pinks and the the magenta, the orange. I use orange all the time in almost every skin tone. Not yellow. That's a big one. Avoid yellow. I pretty much, the only time I would use yellow in skin tone is if they were wearing clothing that was like reflecting the yellow cast onto their skin or if there was a yellow light, like an obvious yellow light, not um, not warm light. I mean yellow light. Yellow is not a color I really use in portraits besides on, on clothing. So that is something to keep in mind. I like that you didn't use yellow in the hair. That's a big deal when it comes to blonde hair. It's a mistake that a lot of people make. They think blonde hair, yellow. Nope. You did exactly right there. But I do, I think you did a great job. Her eyes, and this is small, like 11 by 14 to have this much is another thing that when I take commissions, I wouldn't include this many things. I will include two dog heads and an 11 by 14, and even that's getting iffy. Um, I prefer 16 by 20 if I'm going to include two. But that you included this much, you're, you're limited in how much realistic, how much realism, how much detail you can get when you're working that small on something this big. So um, the next thing is just talking about shadows. Now, this is something you guys hear me talk about all the time. White is not white, almost ever. And even if we go to your reference photo, we can really see that. So I'm going to do, let me open up a little project here so we can look at some colors. And let me put a layer fill in this. Okay, and then I'm just going to move this guy to the side. This way you can see what color I'm talking about. Now, if you are trying to color match, what I'm doing here with this project is really good for you figuring out what colors to use in a project. So let's look at some colors here. Oops, that's not what I meant to do. That's not what I want to go away. You're in the way. Hold on one second. So I'm prepared. Okay, here we go. So when we look at, let's say the white on your your dog here, that's like super, you've got it gray. It's not too actually white, but I mean, that's white. That's still what I would consider white. Again, here, everywhere, it's super, super light. W- look at the actual color here. When we look at how much of a darker gray that should be, like this is the shadow here on the dog, and I would hype that up even more. But look at how gray that is versus light bluish white. I mean, that really does make a difference. And then when we go into a lot of these shadows, so let's talk about the shadow here in the leg. That's almost like it's a warm gray, like a really, really warm, almost like a brownish gray. Yours is still white. There's where your difference is on why your stuff is not looking realistic. You're drawing? Excellent. That's not the problem here. The problem is just a lack of color. So, and again, you still, you improved on this so much from from what that reference photo was. But even if we go by the reference photo, that is one thing I would change. Get those shadows. So we look at your shadowed leg. Look how dark that is. That's like as brown as the dog. Your dog's brown is lighter than what his shadow is. Like his shadow, look at the difference. There's your shadow, his shadow. That color there makes a big difference. And that is something that you want to include on yours. Hold on one second. Um, I feel so unprepared tonight. My whole setup is just not what I usually would want to be. So let's get this, whoops. I want to be able to kind of keep an eye on you in case I have any important videos here or questions here. Okay. So that would be my first tip is just watch your shadows. If we go around, I can go around the entire face. Let me shrink this a little bit, readjusting all my stuff. Okay. Going back through around her face, um, here, there's that. That is the kaput mortem color that I know I always say wrong, but I, that's the color I'm talking about, whereas yours is more of a grayish cream. The, look at the difference there. Those shadows are, in getting darks dark enough, getting those shadows in there, that is what is going to make your work look realistic. I think you did a great job. I like your grass better than the grass in the photo. Um, I think you did a good job. It has just a nice flow, a nice movement um, to it. I just think it looks nice. You can include some yellow there if you wanted to, but um, I mean, it, it looks fine. The big thing is just getting your shadows, getting the the darks dark enough again going back look at look at the shadow of the dog's face that shadow on that side it's almost brown it's so dark yours is still white um her teeth let's look at teeth teeth are not white 
I'm uh, making sure I'm hitting the right part of there. There's her teeth. There's your teeth. See the difference there? Those color values. And it's not so much the color. I mean, color does have something to do with it. Like I said, pulling in those oranges or reds into the skin tones. But the values, are your darks dark enough? Are your lights light enough? If your lights are light enough, you have no problem there. But your darks aren't dark enough. That's really where um, we want, we've got a bit of a challenge. I mean, even on this guy, the pit's face, there's that dark, there's yours. Look at the difference there on those colors. The white in his chest is almost green because it's reflecting the grass. Yours, again, white. So I hope that may, that should give you a bit of an idea. Here's another thing. His collar, it looks like he's wearing, I don't know if it's a no bark collar or what, but there's like a, maybe it's a tracker, but he's got a box, like a square thing on it. On yours, it's just a lump. I would just smooth out that collar, let it be smooth, remove that all together, and see this lump thing here. Um, actually, I want to pull an arrow that I can use for this. Let me open, hold on one second. Just so I can point at stuff with you guys. And pull this down. See, I'm telling you, I'm so unprepared tonight. I don't know what is going on. So here we go. So I would personally, the collar here where it's it comes around this, I would pretty much chop most of that off. Just make it a black loop there. Um, it gets kind of busy, kind of weird what's going on there. I like that you included the chain, but the shadow, we're back to the same shadow. We don't have good values there. So those would be some of the, the changes. If you can adjust those values, get your darks darker. That's pretty much your, your challenge in this. I mean, even, let's see on your jacket. I think you're closer on the jacket. So let's look at some of the darker blues in the jacket. Some of your darker blues. You're pretty close. Your lights, it's almost like your lights aren't light enough, I think, on the jacket. So your lightest area of the jacket is that color. The lightest area here is quite a bit lighter. So there are areas on yours where you're not light enough. So get that in there. Watch out for that. This, here's another area just really quick that I'm noticing. Her head here, that point that comes up is not quite that severe on the reference photo. Part of that would be the shadow. So, it, and that's where in the shadow, their hair, you want more shadows in the hair. So those tips, if you can get your darks dark enough, get your lights light enough, that's what's really gonna make your work look realistic. You've got, your drawing is excellent. And especially in this case where you opened her eyes that were not that way in the photo. I'm so impressed with that. But those are things to watch out for. And another thing to watch, like see how the dog's eyes are in a weird position. I might try to find a dog that's in, a similar angle and see how their eyes look and maybe change the eyes on my my photograph I've had that before where a dog was kind of squinting and they wanted me to open the eyes I need to find that breed at that angle and see what those eyes should look like and try to adjust that there um, otherwise as the artist people look at it because they're not seeing your reference photo when they look at your finished painting they're just like oh so what happened with the eyes there? They don't know you actually improved on the eyes, but that is something that you can do is just to find a reference photo. You don't really, I mean, you guys know I'm big on copyright, but you don't have to worry so much about copyright if you're just looking at like the eye shape. You're just finding a random photo of a dog that looks like that dog on the internet and you're not copying that photo. You're just getting an idea of how those eyes should look. So that's something that you can do. But that is it for this one. I'm going to close these down and let's see who is next. We've got, and I'm just continuing on where we left off last time. So if you submitted your work today, it's, uh, there's no way I'm going to get to it. Um, so please don't be disappointed. Ooh, these are nice too. Okay. So Elizabeth Morgan is next. Let's save these. And the reference photo. My gosh, that looks good. Okay. Reference. This is a pastel. It looks like she said it was an 11 by 14. I'll double check that after I get all these saved. And we will move these over now. You, oops, I don't need all you. I need you and you. Get in here. Okay. So I don't need the color shifts yet. Let's pull these down. This is one of the things that I love about doing pet portraits is when you can take the portrait and change the background and just give it it has such a nice soft feel i absolutely love this one um let's see let's pull these oh you made that cat look way better pretty cat but you even you made it his fur look softer i really i like yours better um than the photograph 
Not, I don't want it, that sounds mean. I'm not saying it's better than the cat. I'm just saying it's better than the photograph. I like your background. I love how you soften this out. You took a, a photograph that's, eh, it doesn't, you know, doesn't really look like a portrait, but you made it a portrait by changing that background. Another thing that I like on this one, and this is something you guys want to watch. Hold on one second. Let me get my little arrow guy up here. Come here. Um, we'll shrink it down. He's a little big. Okay, look at this back line. See how this is smudged out? And it's not just a harsh straight line. That's great. If you put a harsh straight line there, it'll kind of draw attention there just because it's harsh. Your eyes, you've got a few things that you can control where the viewer goes on, on your paintings. Harsh lines, tend to draw the viewer into that area and a harsh line there sometimes maybe that's what, the look that you're going for but here i just love the softness of this back line being soft um that looks great so one thing that on this painting that i keep getting drawn to is this foot now the foot is that is it's in the right location it's drawn right but if you can shadow it a little bit more it it looks it's kind of a weird like lump it, it's one of those things that made me look twice at it like there is too much light there if you can tone that down the other thing let me pull up this did i say whose painting we're looking at i don't remember just in case this is elizabeth morgan hardesty so yeah 11 by 14 pastel mat pastels okay making sure I got all the information there. So with this guy, let's look at the colors here in the shadow. So look at how dark that is. You are not near, I mean, look at how much darker you can go. If you can get your shadows in there, you're gonna get a more three-dimensional look. Now, not everywhere, like, so for example, if we look here, add an arrow over here, look at how we've got a highlight right here on this guy right along that area you don't have a highlight on yours very much not because yours isn't bright enough but because what's next to it is not dark enough if you can darken what's next to it your highlights will be brighter i mean you can't go brighter than white yours is white but your detail is beautiful there everything's great but more of a shadow i think would be really really nice um, just to give you some more dimension you did a great job the mouth you've got that three dimension where it's sticking out and i would even darken up underneath the mouth right in here you can darken that just a bit more to give you even more of that three dimension. This whole area right in here, I would darken up, you know, you've got a definite shadow there if you look at the reference photo. And it's, like I said, beautifully done. And the great thing is where you're at here versus these changes I'm saying aren't gonna take you like less than an hour. It shouldn't take you long just to adjust the values, just that little bit. Now, one other thing you wanna watch, if this is a commission, watch the fact that the cat in the photograph has a very warm tint to it not quite brown it looks almost like it's a um tortoise shell like or a, a dilute torty or dilute tabby torty type thing um but it's got that that the orange tone to it um these undertones in the cat now this is not something you can really see that orange tone here but along this area too this is not something that you would necessarily notice but the cat owner you may be the cat owner i don't know but a cat owner if you're doing this for somebody else that color not quite being rich enough they may call out, they may not like. And that is one thing that I've had to, and you, you're gonna get differences based on computer monitor anyway. So the photo may look different than what they provided you with, but be prepared because you sometimes do have to make adjustments in the color. And I think that that's a totally acceptable adjustment to need to make. Um, if As long as the adjustment in the color is because yours isn't quite matching what they provided you with. If it's because they changed their mind later on, then that I'm gonna charge for. But if it's because what I painted doesn't look like they're, you know, I did a Corgi a while back, love how that painting came out but my monitor that i was looking at showed the dog being a slightly different color than what the photo they actually provided me with i loaded it on another computer and it was like oh they're right it was an easy fix to tint the color but you have to you know watch out for that when you're doing commissions because if you're just a little bit off that can get to people but i think your eyes look excellent i think they look better than the photo um, yeah, get those warm colors in there. That's the warm colors. And then again with, with the darks. And it's mostly the shadows on the white that need the shadows. And that's even this foot here. There should be a shadow right along this edge of the foot. You, you're just missing some of the shadows, I think. But other than that, beautiful, beautiful work. Let's see what we've got next. Who's my next victim? Come on. So we've got Kathleen. We don't have a reference photo. This is a 15 by 20 inch 
Prisma Polychromos and Luminance on a Crescent Mixed Media Dry Board. Her own reference. My goal is to be as realistic as possible, but I but I love color so much I tend to get it carried away. I'm okay with color as long as the, the values are there. So let's go ahead. Kathleen McLean. And we will save that. Let's prop this over in here and take a closer look at it. See if there's... At a glance, I'm not seeing much I would... No, this, I, I mean, without seeing the reference photo, I can't, I can't judge that exact, but from what I can tell, this looks good. One thing that's nice is that the color tone of the horses up front are very cool versus the horses in the back are very warm. That difference in color tone, usually you'll see the opposite. Usually what's up closer will be a little bit warmer and it'll cool off as it moves away. But one thing that is nice is that difference in color tone, the warm versus cool, it does make the horses up close stand out a bit more. So that is, is nice. I like the contrast. I mean, again, without the reference photo, you're when you're going for a super realistic, um, I can't get that. Now, this is a little odd and I probably would leave leave this out this face back here I would just leave out I, I would turn that into a shadow or something else um, it's kind of a weird half face that I don't think I don't think it adds anything to the artwork um, I think you can safely remove the face there and have the focus stay on the horses um, this part of the hal halter here actually let's go ahead and pull that blue um, let's go here this halter here seems a bit flat, like it's missing some detail, or it almost looks unfinished compared to this one. But other, those would be my main my main tips there. With if the reference photo, I can compare a bit more, but just looking at it like as the artwork on its own, those are the things I think that these horses up front do stand out. I like that. I think you've got good contrast here, um, good shadows. I would just I would remove the person in the background. Um, to anything else, even a horse, one of the background horse colors or, you know, anything else would be better than a random like half a, half a face in the photo. But really well drawn, really well shaded, everything looks good. So let's see. Yeah, the detail, Marcel, I agree, the detail in the horse's eyes are beautiful. All around, that's just a strong piece. Okay, let's see what we've got. Next is Namita Bandor. Come on, computer, respond. This is colored pencil on an eight by 16. Her goal was to convey the feeling of soaring high. This is our first piece with polychromos. I've been working in colored pencil about three years now, but recently got a set of polychromos. And let's see more of that comment. If it, my computer wants to load. The background is done in pastels. When I was almost done with the piece, I thought the background I thought that the background from the reference photo was a little distracting, so I changed it. I was not able to achieve the out of focus look. It just looks like I rushed through it. I also think I chose the wrong paper. This is a cold press. Okay, so first off, I wanna say I love that you're recognizing the things that you feel were weak in the, the piece. I haven't really looked at it yet, but just the fact that you're able to say, I know that I don't like this. I know that I don't like that. I know that this could be improved on. As an artist, you anytime you can do that and recognize things that you want to change in your artwork that's a big deal because that's pretty much that's when you start improving is when you recognize like this is a little off that's a little off this is what i would change being able to recognize what you ch would change now that doesn't mean to beat yourself up over it you don't want to like i'm not perfect it's the end of the world i give up because i see that happen a lot too no one's going to start out perfect the point is to be able to recognize what would you do differently next time that's a really big deal it's a very positive thing so let's go ahead and look closely at this. Now I can tell just from looking at the bird that he is not drawn accurately. He's adorable, but he's not realistic. Um, if that's, let me double check that that was your goal. And we will save the reference photo. If my computer wants to load, it's, my computer is angry at me. Okay. My goal is to convey the feeling of soaring high. So now you didn't say your goal was to create, create the most realistic work, but I'm still gonna address some of that for those who do want to um, get stuff to look more realistic. But you, you did get soaring high. You've achieved your goal, I think. So let's pull these over into, I don't need this. You and you. Oops, I don't know what I wanted you to do link okay so obviously when you look at the bird you're the head of the bird is very very large the belly of the bird is very large it's not as streamlined if you look at the actual photograph look how long and thin elongated that head and body is they're very streamlined yours is a bit more um 
I want to say he almost has a, the body shape of chicken. Uh, my chicken. He, he, well, my cockatiel chicken. But he's got the, the kind of fuller belly and the, he kind of reminds me of him. Um, I think he's adorable. Like, if you're going for, like, super, super cute, like, almost realistic but almost cartoony, you manage that. Like, this, he's really cute. I see what you mean with the paper choice. If you're using a cold press, it is rough. It's going to be hard to smooth out and that makes it even harder to get that out of focus look. Now, you said you were going for an out of focus look. So, one of the things that I want to talk about with that, the reason that that is out of, doesn't look out of focus, even though that's what you wanted, is your lines, your edges here, look how harsh they are. They are, get my arrow down. Okay, these edges, that doesn't look out of focus because I can see how crisp those edges are. If we can soften that out, and let's see. Um... That, okay, let me go ahead. I was just double checking something. Let's, I don't need to see this layer. I've got a mess over here, don't I? Go away. Don't need you. Okay. So if we take the the edge here and just smudge that out, let me, I'll actually go to the walking tablet really quickly. I'm going to just do an airbrush type. Oops. You are good. What size am I? If I take this, let's do a color here. And I don't need this to be super, I should probably do this on a new layer. Okay, if I can just go, look at what happens if I just soften this out. It starts to look more out of focus, but you've got to soften that in order for that to happen. And I can even mute that a bit more. If I go, let's pull this out so it's a lower opacity and pull, like, just get a, tint, a hint of that blue back there. Just see how it just kind of blurs it, pushes it back, and what a difference that one thing can make in giving you that more in the distance versus up close. Just super, it, it's so simple. And you can still, if you still have this piece, I, that is, normally I say don't go back and mess with your older work. It's not really worth it. Just start from scratch. That's an easy fix. You can do that now. Um, it being that you said you wanted it to look out of focus. But those are my two main things with this guy. A um, couple other things, actually. Let's, let's look at a couple other things. So the next thing I want to look at are our values. And that is the same, same as I, I'm always saying. Look at the difference between the darks on this guy. Look at the dark wing, how dark that is. And yours is more of a light gray. Very, very dark, not as dark. So that, that is something, um, look at the shadow where it should be really dark under his face. Look how dark or light yours is versus the actual one. So again, get those, your lights are actually mostly light enough. It's that your darks aren't dark enough. So that is, is something that you wanna watch. The different paper using a hot press watercolor paper will make the colored pencil way easier for you and then just toning down that background. Oops, no, don't change, don't close that, I need that. Okay, let's look on to the next one. Next victim. Yeah, and Vladimir, you're talking about the wings not looking quite right. Yeah, the, the drawing is not accurate. So that, like I said, I addressed that. The, all around the drawing is not accurate. So that, that like, I mean, the wing down here needs to be much, much longer. This one's shorter. Um, they're backwards on which one. That, that one's probably okay. It's this one needs to be a lot longer. I suspect that the artist ran out of room on the paper. And so tried to shorten it so it didn't, you had that gap there. But, um, cause I've done, when I was younger, I used to do that all the time. So let's look at Amanda Nip, Nipkin, Nipchin. One of those. Come on, open up computer. Now again, we don't have a reference photo, so it's hard for me to judge or compare too much. She said it was her first serious attempt at a realistic portrait with colored pencils on white paper. There's an A4, I don't know what size that is because I'm bad at numbers. Um, Polycrobos with luminance and brush and pencils, titanium white and touch up texture. Okay, so let's see if I've got any tips. Um, it looks realistic, you did a great job with that. One thing, unless this dog is actually cross-eyed, in which case you would want to keep it that way, his eye, I wanna talk about his eyes. 
So actually, I'm going to do a, a little change on his eyes. You've got one. The highlights are in two different locations. Um, one, the highlight is up here. One, the highlight is over here. And the pupils are not in the same location. That's a really big deal. Unless the dog actually is cross-eyed and it's commissioned, then you would want to capture that actual dog. Otherwise, that is something that I would definitely want to adjust. Let me, hold on one second. Let me make sure I'm not. Somebody is messaging me. Let me make sure it's not something I need to, somebody's like warning me that something died. Hold on. By died, I mean like my camera went out. That sounded really weird. One second. Come on, computer or laptop or tablet, whatever the heck I'm working on. What was that message? Wow, this is taking way longer than I thought. Okay, doesn't look like anything I need to, to worry about. Okay, let's, I'm gonna enlarge him quite a bit so that I can zoom in on his eyes. Now that does make it pixely, but I can actually see this. Yeah, see, and Lynn said that her dogs used to do this. Um, if your dog's eyes are, are crossed, that's fine. But if they're not, just really, really watch for that. Or even if your dog just has the ability to make the eyes do different things and sometimes they're not crossed, sometimes they are, I'd capture them when they're not. Otherwise, people are going to look at it and assume you did it wrong, even if the reference photo is exactly the same. See, I'm doing it to you now because you didn't provide me the reference photo. So I'm looking at that going, huh, okay. So let's go ahead and I am going to change the color here. Let's darken this up quite a bit. Actually, I don't need that. Let's get a darker brown really quick. I'm going, whoops, I guess I should actually have a paintbrush that doesn't work very well without it. Nope, too big. That'll work. Okay, so I'm going to pull this and I'm going to get rid of that shadow all together because it doesn't, you know what? I should stop being stupid and hold on one second. Let's start over. I keep forgetting to start a new layer when I do this. easier for me to show you the before and after if I've actually got layers there. Okay, trying this again. So we've got a shadow under the upper lid, which I typically like to do anyway. Darken this, shrink you down a bit more. Actually, bump up that opacity. So if we get rid of the shine, look at the difference of where those pupils are. That's kind of a big deal if the dog's not actually cross-eyed. So let's pull these down a bit. So he's at least close and that'll make a big difference. And then I'm gonna pull that up a bit and still then come back down with that shadow right over it. Now, when I do a highlight on the eye, if you've got a reference photo that has the two dots like that, that's usually because of a flash. That is, it doesn't, if you wanna make it look more realistic, this will let eyes go a little bit more. Um, I'm gonna take a bluish tone, which I will normally do. Let's actually cool that off a bit. Bluish gray, go pretty light there. And okay, I'm gonna put a highlight right across this and see how I don't go all the way at the top but I'm gonna round that a bit and this helps the eye I want that highlight to be on the same or close to the same location on both eyes it's not exact but we're close now I'm gonna take an actual more opaque white up that opacity and I can put my highlight on part of this but that blue oops pull you down Curving around there will help the eye to look more three-dimensional. Um, ooh, my, my shadow is not good. Hold on, I can fix this. Uh, let's pull you down. My shadow's kind of going in a weird, uh, the highlight there is going in a weird direction compared to the other eye. But we're closer. He's not perfect because I'm rushing through this. Um, I would take more time and really make sure that that's just right. But look at the difference of that eye. That versus that. How much more, and again, like I said, mine aren't lined up perfect. I would need to take a little bit more time and get that, that exact. I just wanna give you an idea of what a difference that can make 
Um, get rid of that spot. That spot is the wrong kind of flash. It's not the kind of flash you want in the eye on a portrait, whether it be person or animal. You generally, if you can get that little blue, that little like glassy looking, it's usually going to be done very translucent. You don't want like blue, blue. Um, it's, you can still see the gray underneath. You can still see the brown underneath. And then that the opaque, just little white dot that will help you to make your eyes look so, so much more realistic than the other way. Okay. Yeah, I am working on Photoshop. It's whatever the newest one is. Photoshop updates on their own. Like it's an, a monthly subscription type thing or I pay annually, but it's, um, you're always on the newest version. Okay. Let's go to the next. We had Alan Woolett, but I talked, I laughed about his. Alan Woolett, by the way, if you've not seen him, let's just go ahead and, and enlarge this. I am a huge fan of Alan's. That looks amazing that is like oh i love his work so much so i can't really judge his because i'm too much of a fan i am not subjective when it comes to alan's work like that i and this piece especially the moss on the tree oh it's so pretty but anyway um so we're not gonna be talking about alan's alan i think is a goober for even submitting to this um if you can't tell way too big of a fan okay so we have elk Elky, Elky Jan EJ's art. Pastel drawing of a little owl. It is done in pastels, sticks, and pencils. Her goal was photorealism, and thanks for the opportunity. You're welcome. Okay, so no reference photo. So I can't really compare to that. And actually, from what I can tell, I don't even need to bring this into Photoshop. Let's just look at this. That is awesome. Actually, okay, one thing I might change. Let's pull this over here. Even though I don't have the photo, so maybe this is exactly what it looked like on the eye. But one thing I would change on this guy is in his eye. Where, there he is. I'm going to remember to put a layer this time. Let's blow him up. So back over here. That eye, is, see how it's the same all the way around? Now, with an, a bird, you're not going to have the same level of shadow that a dog would or a cat would because they're going to have more of an eyelid kind of creating that, that bit of a shadow over the eye. But you still, ideally, are going to want some variation here. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to pick actually the same color as his eye. But I'm going to now take it darker. So there's the, that color. Let's pull it. I'm going to go a little bit more orangey. Not much. And actually, this guy, I would have to look it up. Some owls, their shadow should be more green. Some should be more orange. It depends on the owl. I don't have a photo. I can't th remember off the top of my head, so I'm just going to use this as an example. But if you can get... Um, let me pull that up a bit more. There we go. little variation in there. It's too flat. You don't need a ton. Just that little bit can make a big difference. Like, if he, you can get more detail. With him, he's in the dark. You're probably not going to have much of a highlight on the eye, so I'm fine with that. But you may want to play around with it. I mean, maybe that would look... Let's find out what would happen if we did a highlight. It may not be the right call. This is why I love Photoshop. You can find out before you do it on your artwork and mess anything up. But let's say blue doesn't really work as a highlight on this one because there's no blue. Well, there's this grayish color. Let's, let's match that one. Let's go with this color here for part of the highlight, but I'll go a little bit lighter. That'll work. And I'm gonna, okay, opacity is low. Oop, I need a little bit brighter. And I need a little bit more opacity. That doesn't look good at all. Eh, I'm thinking no. I'm thinking, I'm thinking on this one with the darks, probably not. I might put, lighten up the bottom a little bit more. Maybe not, though. I'm not loving that either. Um, but getting a little bit of a shadow, just a little bit of something more under the eye, just a touch, not a lot. Just get getting variation in that eye. If you look at more owls, if you can find more photos, of because this photo, whatever you use, the color, the lighting, the shadow is absolutely amazing. But that that eye, even with what I did, it still looks flat. I need to see a reference photo and I need to see more photos. Like I, I would look up, if your reference photo looks that flat, I would look up other photos of this specific type of owl and see what kind, like if other photos might have a little bit of detail, something a little extra that would punch that up a bit because the rest of this, your contrast, the composition, I love this piece so much, but I'm almost drawn too much by the eye being like flat and round. There's nothing there and there usually will be something. 
So let's go ahead and move on. Next we have Paula Kissel. Come on, load. And the reference photo. This is an acrylic on a 16 by 20 inch canvas. Oh, computer, stop being so slow. I really need a new computer. It's gotten pretty bad over the years. I've had this one for quite a while. Oh, come on, rotate. Go, go, go. There we go. This was for her um, brother in Colorado who wanted it exactly like the photo to improve. I would gradient the sky more and soften the edges of the shadow. See, I love that you know that, though. I love that, like, you've got to be able, I think, when you're taking commissions or you're doing something for somebody, you've got to be able to do what the, the client wants. But I love that you're like, this is what I would do differently. Um, there was a painting once I did. Uh, it was an Italian Greyhound, and I loved how he came out. But the the person wanted it to be the the she wanted a bow on the dog which I did and I put the shadow so it looked realistic nope she wanted it a different she wanted me to remove the shadows and highlights it looked terrible so what I did my photograph on my website is the way I liked it the way I thought it looked good and then I went back and made the changes she wanted to the, the ribbon so that it looked flat and I don't know I don't I don't know why she was wanting that but um, sometimes that happens where, you know, it would be a better choice to do something else. And you have to, I've got a few portrait or a few commissions I've done where I'm like, I don't think that's a good idea, but if that's what you want. So let's see contrast. You can hype up that contrast. Definitely. Um, the mountain in the background here, I'd probably hype that up a bit more. Let me, oops, not you. You extend down. There we go. Um, I like that you soften some of this out. Some of the detailing in the back, like here, hold on, where's my handy arrow? Oops, I'm drawing on my handy arrow. There we go. And let's change the size. And there. Okay. So some of this here you've softened your oranges out quite a bit you don't have as much detail you've got more detail here than you do here and even here is very very soft compared to here this up here i would pull a little bit more with oranges you can see that in the reference photo there are more, or not oranges well oranges and yellows you can pull brighten up some of those brights a bit more i would definitely hype up that contrast and then in here this orange should be much much more yellow I would, in more detail, I would pull out more detail at that stage. I mean, I, I will blur something like that out, like a landscape versus something that has a different subject up close is going to be a bit different. The landscape, you're going to typically put a bit more detail even in the distance. Whereas here, like you've softened it like I would if I were doing a, like, a deer standing in the road. I don't know why a deer popped in my head, but let's say there's a deer standing in the road. I would have the focus on the deer and I would blur out that background. But here, it's almost like you blurred that out, even though here, it, it, I don't think it should be for this landscape. Um, if you were going to blur out back here, sure. Back here, sure. But I would, I would still, even though it's a landscape and you can get away with more detail, I would, you know, have more and more detail moving forward, not the other way around in this case. So it just looks like back here is a bit more detailed. And like I said, I would pull up, brighten some of that up um, one of the things that's happening is that it's a bit flat back there just because you don't, the, the darks are almost too dark and your lights aren't lighting up. Actually, your darks are fine if you lightened up your lights. If you can pull some of those in, that'll help. The other thing, your shadows are almost a, like a dark grayish black, like they're dark charcoal. If you look at the reference photo, those actually are blue. It's like a bluish gray, but it has a very cool tone because of the way that those shadows are. That is something that I would try to include in those shadows. I think that that's going to give you a bit more depth but the shadows look beautifully blended. You did such a good job. You said this was acrylic too, huh? Yeah, great job here. But I would go ahead and get a bit more detailing in here. And then these trees up here, they need a lot more yellow. If you look at that reference photo, you, they're so much warmer. And if you can warm that up, that's another thing that's going to create more depth in your artwork. If you can warm up the right areas by warming up those trees, not only is it more accurate to the reference photo, which you said your, your brother wanted, but it will create more depth right now look at yours here and here which is far away it's all pretty much the same 
If you can instead, I mean, I talked about putting a little bit of yellow in here, but here, really pull up, warm up those trees, make them brighter, pull more yellow into those greens, and that's going to help yellow pretty much this whole row, whether it be the orange section or section or the um, the trees here, warm those up, get the yellow in there. I would let the tree trunk stand out a little bit more too. You've got some, probably put a bit more, get that detail in there. Here, this is really, really soft, really blurry. The grass that you have there on the reference photo, I'd sharpen that up. I'd let that, it looks, be, you did a really good job too. Your perspective is, is nice on this. I'm really, I like this, but get a little bit more detail in here. I mean, it's a landscape and so you don't necessarily want to blur out everything if you had a subject, maybe a butterfly was flying by or something that was in focus more, then yeah, blur this section down. I would even, whoops, I would even blur that out, but that's not the case here. So I would want to sharpen up a little bit more, not too much. I mean, I'm not saying, you know, you don't have to go overboard with it, but I would still sharpen up the stuff that's up close a bit more than what you've got. But this is nice. And I like, I would have done a gradient in the sky too. Even the reference photo technically has a gradient. This is lighter at the bottom than it is at the top. So you could have added a bit. Your sky is definitely darker um, than the reference photo. So you could have gotten away, I think, with a gradient still stayed with him wanting it to be like the photo. But this, it's still, it's beautiful, beautiful painting here. Okay. Let's go on to the next. I'm making sure we're all. Yeah, um, the, the quality of the photo, you're right, that can. And one of the things that I like to do is take the photo. Now, I know in your case, you said your brother wanted it exactly like the photo. But I, and it may be the photo of the painting too. The photo of the, the painting photo may be a bit darker. Um, but the photo of, let's say your reference photo. I like to take those, if you've got the option, take them into Lightroom or Photoshop. Make some, do some editing, especially in Lightroom. And you can brighten up certain colors, like make your yellows brighter, make your, your greens a little dark. You can mess with all of that in, before you ever hit your painting. And you you can make stuff just look so much more um, bold, so much more alive. Uh, even it's the same photo, but just by adjusting colors, like warming up certain colors, you've got a lot of option when you work uh, options when you work in Lightroom on things that you can change that you wouldn't have necessarily thought of doing on your own. But when you see it in Lightroom, when you've been editing, because you can you have a nice undo button it makes you brave to go try it on your artwork and it can make you it can improve your artwork so much photoshop and um lightroom are just and that all comes bundled too with the the photoshop there um whatever it's i want to say it's like ten dollars a month to get you, know, you have both so i could be a little off on that but i think that's what it was okay oh i'm glad you're actually here today paula to, to see the review yay okay so next We have a slow computer. Laura Wench, Welsh, sorry. Let's blow that up. Come on, my, it expired, what? Why can't I open this? Oh, bad. Huh, did this get removed? I don't think it was, was it shared? I don't know what happened and I don't know. Laura, are you watching? If you're watching, Laura, let me know if you want me to go and review that. Right now, it almost looks like that, that was removed. The post was deleted. If it was deleted, then I'm not going to, like if you don't actually want it reviewed, I don't wanna, unless it happens twice. Like if this happens to other people's posts, then I know there's just something weird going on with Facebook. So let's scroll down. I'm going to skip that one really quick. We've got Leanna Jones. If that happens again, I'll know it's Facebook. Okay. Yeah, I'm thinking that post probably got deleted, so I'm not going to go over it in case that's not what she wants. Maybe she changed her mind. So we have Chocolate Lab, it looks like. Come on, scroll, computer. Scroll. You can do it. <sighs> Slow computers drive me crazy. I type too fast. Everything I do on the computer is very fast, so my computer starts slowing down. No, I can't do it. Okay, she said, let's find out what her goals are. This is my dog, Moose. My goal for this piece was to practice drawing realistic dogs so I could do a commission for other people. It's an 11 by 14, done with Prismacolor colored pencils. Okay, so let's talk about realism here 
So first, the drawing, not accurate at all. It, you, you, you cartoonized, cartoonized him? Cartoonized. Cartoon, let's make up words. You made him look like an adorable cartoon. You did a great job on that. I love the direction of the fur. I love that you added that. But he doesn't, if you're going for realism, which you said you were, then a few things that you want to watch. Um, one, highlights and colors, the length of fur, the initial, okay, so let's actually, I'm getting ahead of myself. Let's back up to the drawing. The drawing itself, let's, I, I love how you photographed this, by the way. I think this is a wonderful photo. I like that you put the photo on the wood. I think that this is a beautiful, like, promo shot of your work. But let us um, duplicate that layer. Where is my, there we go. And I am going to tilt him so that he's like this guy. So it makes it easier for us to see where, draw, where parts of this are not accurate. Why does that matter? Because you said you're going for realism. If you're going for something like, some people are going to want a more cartoony look of their dog and would prefer that. So that's not to say that this style is wrong or bad. It's just you said you were going for realism, so that's what we're gonna, going to address. Um, let's see. Yeah, um, Dixie Art said her computer gets slow when digital painting and that may be running the, the Wacom tablet, I think is slowing things down while live streaming. Um, it's been slow anyway, but it's like over the top slow right now. So you're probably right. That's probably the majority of my problem. Okay, so little things. Look at the gap in the ear here. Like when you look at your drawing, look at little things and then look at yours. Look at the size difference of that gap behind the ear on yours versus that one. You may think, okay, it's close. It's not a big deal. If you're going for realism, it is. Another thing, that like one of the first things that pops out, look how rounded his head is. Look how flat it is on the reference photo. That shouldn't be that rounded. Now, you did a good job. Like, it's not a bad drawing. It's just if you're going for super realistic, that is not that. It, it's not quite there yet. You are getting there. You're going to be amazing. I have no doubt about that. So don't let this discourage you. And anyone who's watching this, don't ever let a critique discourage you, at least if it's a, especially a critique that you've asked for, but don't, don't let it discourage you. These are just tips that I would give my own students. You don't have to agree with me. These are just, you know, tips I'd give my own students and hopefully you can help to improve on this stuff. But this guy, like his head, little things like that, like that is way too rounded there. His eyes, not quite in the right the right shape not we've, we've definitely got some differences there another thing look at on the photo here look at the pink or it's kind of a, a well sort of pinkish flesh tone under the eyes you've got all around here you don't have that on yours at all yours is just solid brown all the way around it's like you went through and found a pencil you're like okay this color looks pretty close to my dog i'm gonna put it everywhere no that's not what you're gonna want to do when you're trying to go for realism so watch this yeah, no, you're exact. Um, DJ is right. Super cute, though. Like, really, really cute. And that's why it's kind of hard to judge because if you told me your job, your your goal was like a caricature type, I'd be like, A plus, perfect. But because that wasn't your goal, and here's the other thing. Typically, when your goal is realism, this is where most of us start. You are on the right track. You will get there. So don't, like I said, don't ever be discouraged by these tips. Okay, so let's look at the colors. Forehead, almost white. Look at that. It's a like a, a magenta E white, but magenta E, I'm making up words again. But look at that. Look how light that is. Look at yours. That's a big difference. And your what's happening too with yours, you're putting highlights for the sake of highlights, but they're not where the highlights go. Um, all over the place, they're not where the highlights go. So when you put highlights in a random place, you change the bone and muscular structure of that animal. You can't just put highlights because you know it should have highlights. So like here, we've got the highlight that goes all the way across the forehead. That's not exactly right look at how dark then the shadow is here so you've got that you've got part of that but yours aren't even dark enough there and then you've got super light look how light all the way actually i think i made my point with that look how light all the way around here is it's not quite that light so i would say let's say you spent four hours on this i i don't know how long you spent but let's say it was four hours put 16 if you put in more time and get more time on that drawing, make if that drawing is not accurate, don't even bother shading. Draw it again until you get it just right, perfectly accurate, until it's exactly what you want it to be, and then start shading. Because once you start in with the colors, with a colored pencil, you're only going to be able to adjust so much. So that's definitely something to watch for. But the colors, again, like I said, there are so many. So we've got this really warm orange color, cool brown. We've got this highlight, 
Yours is a little bit cooler, um, but and, and not quite as light as it is as it should be. Here, look at how his rib cage comes out. You flattened him out there, so he looks like he's leaning, where in the photo he's not. So you know, watch those sorts of things. Watch that shape that that rib cage there is missing on yours. And again, back to the shadows. Wow, that one's almost green. I probably wouldn't go green on that. I would just go with a, a cooler brown. Um, I don't like to include green usually when I'm doing animals, unless they're like right over green water and you've got some reflection there, but. Um, big difference in these colors that's, um, or values. I, and it's not, while color matters, it's the value I'm more concerned with. Your light's light enough, your dark's dark enough. That's going to make a big difference. But like I said, if you don't start out with a solid, accurate drawing, doesn't matter how great you shade it, it's still not going to look super realistic, assuming, like I said, that that's your goal. Look at his nose. That highlight, get that light. Look how beautiful and bright that highlight is. And then no highlight. Uh, you know, getting those in there is going to make a difference. And your drawing skills are good. I the, I see what you're seeing. You just want to spend more time. You, you've got this. You can, I have no doubt you can draw this perfectly. Like, no doubt whatsoever. If you spend more time getting that drawing perfectly and then watch your values, watch some of those colors, get some variation in there so it's not all solid. When it's all solid, one color like this. And this is what I always tell people. We're like, well, I need to know what color do you do for this subject? What color is this subject? like 20 colors i don't know not one if you do one it can be the perfect color but it's one color and now it's a cartoon lots of colors lots of values more so than colors i mean you could do this with just one pencil realistically as long as you've got the values it can still look very realistic but in your case if you've got a lot of pencils throw in get some warms get the cools get that variation in there and you're going to get something looking much much more realistic but again like i said you've got a lot of this is just highlights and shadows for the sake of highlights and shadows but they aren't in the right, right place at all and so it makes him not i mean that that's going to make a big difference too okay so hopefully that helps and like i said i can tell you got good you're gonna do great your drawing skills are good you just want to spend more time oops come on computer oh and a different crop that's okay we we got the idea um this isn't finished i'm not gonna rev oh wait is it finished no it's not finished um Kaylee, I am not going to review that because I want to, I'm just, that was one of the rules on this is that it needed to be finished artwork. So you can, when this is finished and we do another critique, submit again then. It looks like you're off to an awesome job, but we're not going to go there yet. Okay, so next we've got Ellen Ek Ekblom. And this is adorable. Let's see. Super slow computer. How many times do you think I can complain about that in the next hour? I think I can do it a lot. I'm really good at complaining save that this is such a cute photo oh i love the angle i love this is great and try if you take commissions you're gonna have people like i had someone a while back they they want this was years and years and years ago i don't even remember who it was but they wanted me they they showed me the photo they wanted it was a mom horse and her baby and the mom it was like part of her butt not even the whole horse part of her butt and then the baby at a weird angle and the head was down and it's like that's not gonna look like you you're looking at my other artwork that looks super realistic and that has you know it looks it, it looks good i can't do that with that photo just based on the angle alone like i'm not even gonna get into bad bad lighting and all that that i, I can adjust doing percent but it's like you don't want me to work from that photo don't be afraid to tell your clients try to get another photo like and walk them through how to get that good photo how to get a better angle um like i try to avoid now that i have seen seen portraits pet portraits where people took did it where it was looking down on the animal and the dog was looking up and it was adorable usually that doesn't look good though those those really good examples aren't as common as if you can get the owner to get down get eye level with the dog and take the photo here like have the dog sit on the couch and then the person can be on the floor like take the dog the photo that way that usually is going to pro pro produce better results like i said there are exceptions because i've seen it done at the other angle and it was wonderful but usually if you can get the owner to get down even use natural daylight that's going to give you better photos and this photo i really do like did I save that? I hope I saved that. Let's go ahead and you, whoops, not you, not you, and you. There we go. Pull those over into Photoshop. So she said her goal was realism, not photorealism, with a certain amount of abstract in the background. The size is a 20 by 28 inch oil on canvas. Attaching the reference photo in the comments. Thank you for that. That makes my job easier. Oh, I like what you did here. See, I wouldn't say that your background is remotely abstract. That's not really what that is. 
but it's good. Like it, it's good. wrong terminology. Excellent execution. I like the shadow that you've got off to the side there. I really like this. I think you, you actually improved on this. I don't really have much for you here because I think that you did a great job really improving on the photo. I like the highlights that you've got on the side of the horse. I like the contrast. It looks like you've kind of hyped up some of the contrast in some areas. I think, no, you look good. I mean, being that you're not going for your, you said realism, not photorealism. You did it. You, you've got that. Um, you might, you could probably, like if I'm going to get nitpicky because I don't have much for you here. Um, other than critiquing a choice of words, which is super irrelevant. Um, here, you might want to highlight here, like this could have a bluish tint to it. Um, if you, on some of these colors, like here, maybe here, if you pull just a hint of like a bluish, like a cooler brown, a cooler grayish color there, that can make it pop even more. And even on the baby horse here, like a little bit of a cooler color there, if you um, can pull out a bit, that that looks good. The other thing is on this guy, and this is typical, when you take a photo, the white is going to be overexposed. But when you've got a, this much white, you may want to do some shading. Look and see if you can find a photo of a horse where the photo of the white was not overexposed and see like how that looks. But when you look at, at yours, it almost, it starts to look more, um, I would get more shading on the front of the nose too, get more pinks in there. But it starts to look very flat, even though that is what it looked like on the reference photo. So that is, you know, something that I, that I would watch for, but no, you did, you did good. I mean, you said you were going for, you weren't going for photorealism. So I think you're like, there's not, I, I anything I'm going to nitpick about is going to be, you know, we're somebody who wants more photorealism, but I think that this is good. One thing that's a little bit weird to me on the painting here, how it kind of comes up and then it's almost like you've got a halo going up over the horse and then like this. I might fade the shadow a little bit behind the ears, like just pull that in a little bit more or even ha you can have a softer transition here. Eh, you don't really need it. The transition, fine, ignore me. But this here, I would probably not have it just harsh right there where it goes up around because it kind of draws attention when the viewer looks through here, it kind of pulls you up off the canvas a bit. So if you can kind of pull that little bit of a shadow there, that'll help keep the viewer in. But you've got good shading the rest of the way around where you've got this almost vignette effect. It's just that right there is so bright, the green up there, if you can tone that down just a bit, that can help um, keep the viewer on that painting longer. The eyes look amazing. You improved, like there's a lot on this too. Your eyes looked better than I think what the, the reference photo was. I, you did a really good job. Okay, next. Okay, Callie does want me to go back after the picture. I've replied to my original post with a finished piece. If not, I understand. Let me see if I can get it to pull up. I don't need to pull it into Photoshop, so I could, if I can get it to enlarge, or we'll just look at the little one if I have to. Let's see. No, oh, that's still not going. My problem right now is I can't get this post. I don't want to lose my place there because that is going to... I, I don't want to lose this. Hold on. Let me see if I can pull you up because it, it's it's going to go out of order basically, and it makes it hard. It's hard for me to look stuff up. Um, come on, comments. I don't want to refresh it because I'll lose my place. Oh my gosh, load. Insert more complaining. Do me a favor. I'm not even going to wait. I, this is going to take me too long. Um, post again as a new post at the bottom and that way yours will be the newest and, and I'll pull it there. Um, because that year, I mean, yours is next or would have been next. It's just, it's going, yeah, my computer's just being, oh wait, is it here? Hold on, hold on. I got, it, it loaded the old stuff. This was from last, last time. So let me see if I can find it. We're getting there. We're getting closer and getting almost. Oh, it's gone. 
It's not even there now. Um, yeah, post again. I'm not seeing anything from... Yeah, post a new one um, and I'll jump to yours. Okay. So back to, let's see, we had you. We're skipping you because you're not done. We did you. What do we have here? So this is Letitia Naramore. This is an acrylic, 11 by 14, Frederick's Blue Label Canvas. Goal was to work on values. You went as far as doing a value study. I see you posted good. I'll, I'll go to that in a second. Let's just go to that. We'll open it in a new tab and see if that pulls up easier for me. Um, and open, open. There we go. Oh my gosh, this is cute. And that is a terrible photo. We'll start there. Um, your photograph, get better photos of your artwork. Like it's okay. Like I like to take photos of my artwork on wood tables. Um, and you can get like a wood, let me download this so you guys can see what I'm talking about better. You can get a fake wood. It's like paper. It almost, it's like a roll of wrapping paper that's a little bit thicker. And take photos that way. <laughs> see your feet in the photo. Crop your photo. Um, that's not how you want to post a photo online. Um, the, but that is not like, I mean, you. I like doing photos for, I'm looking for the wrong picture. Am I looking for the wrong picture? I might have been. Well, we'll see. We'll come back. Um, I was not looking for the redhead because that one was not finished. I keep passing Callie's. It's not showing. I mean, the one Callie's isn't letting me click on it. So it was supposed to be a new one, but I've, oh, Callie's is the unfinished, not the boat. If you finished it then, thank you, um, Callie. If you actually did finish it, I'm going to, I'm, I'll go back to it and we'll, we'll take a look if it is finished. Um, we'll do that next. So I'm, I'm really tired. I got woken up today. Excuses. Here's my excuses. Um, they're doing construction on the apartment below me and they woke me up really early this morning, early for me. So I'm going on no sleep, very little sleep. Anyway, my brain's not here. Okay. So with this one, the photograph is not like, I mean, even in this case, you could have cropped it. You could actually let's straighten you out a bit. I'm cropping off a little bit of the painting just to get it cropped right. But I mean, there, much better. Post that. Don't post the picture on a table or a chair and your toes, and at least your toes are painted cute. But, you know, make sure, watch that your, um, yeah, it was the boat one is the one that I was looking for. I'm sorry. Um, but yeah, we'll come back to Callie's too because I that was one I was going to skip as long as it's finished. So this one, um, wait. Did you do two? Hold on, let's go back. I'm all confused now. Er, let's see, where is... This is Letitia's. Okay, she did the value study. That's why we have two. There is no... Re okay, here's the reference photo. You've got a lot of photos here for me. Thank you. And like you said, your goals were values, so... You've got, looks like two photos. Oh, that's cute. This is a good example. This photo is a really good example of where an artist can improve on the photo. Like the, it's a cute photo, but it's a little out of focus. It's a little bit, it was probably taken at a distance. Um, you, you get to tighten that up. You get to sharpen things up and take a photo that is otherwise really adorable but make it better because it, it's kind of out of focus. There's only so much you can do in Photoshop to fix that, but you can in your artwork. So that's like just such a good example, I think, of where everyone's like, well, what's the point of photorealism? Well, this is the point to improve on because sometimes your photos are not as good as they could be. Okay. So there is our reference photo. Um, you, you said your point, your focus were values, so if your focus, I mean, if we're going to go back, the drawing isn't super accurate, but it looks like that wasn't your point at all Make it to work in values. Okay. Um, you know, you may want to spend a bit more time on the drawing. The bird is a little bit um, 
not quite shaped right, but still cute. Let's blow this up some. I like yours. I like how you really darkened up that branch. These white areas, though, I think are a bit too much. They're kind of drawing attention away from the bird and right to the branch. Like, okay, so the branch, you want it to look good, obviously. You want every area of your painting to look good. But these white marks here, see how when you look at those, it's like, I'm looking, my attention is going there. It almost looks like white floating. It doesn't look like the shadow or like the, the little white lines that you have on the, the paint or the reference photo because yours are, are too bright, too much contrast. You don't see me say, hear me say that that often, but it is too much contrast there. But I do like that. This branch is a little bit shaped weird and it, it's drawing my attention. It's almost like this section here isn't finished. It's kind of solid, but it's also too thick. Like thin that out like a lot. This whole section here can kind of be chopped and then that won't seem so weird that there's this big glob of gray. Um, here. Now what it looks like you did almost is like you painted the underpainting a solid. It's too solid here. See these black bits? You want black bits, but yours are too even all the way across. If you look at the reference photo, there's black bits, but they're kind of mixed throughout instead of being quite that even. The other thing is look at the, the shape of the branches, which direction. You've got some of these are excellent but then back here they're a little bit too uniform almost um and even that's an area i might put a little out of focus too soften some of that up and that way the bird is going to stand out a bit more um but the shape of the nest is a little bit weird compared to like it's kind of it's too much nest there we go too much nest not enough bird i guess um and then the coloring here so being that you're working on values that's the biggest thing i like that you darken this i'm actually good with that i think that it looks really really good it's that these are so bright that they're too bright and my attention is being drawn there i think you could also right here this branch it you may even be better off to take it out altogether. but on the photo if you look at your reference that branch, see how it's over here? No, you had two reference photos. One may be behind it, but this one is a better would be a better layout because the branch isn't directly behind his head. It's like over a little bit. I would still change the color a little bit, maybe soften it, lighten it up a bit more so that the bird's head is still the thing that you're focused on. But here, the color of the bird and the branch, see how it just kind of connects? He's The bird is getting lost a bit more in that um, because of where that branch is and because of the values, because they're so similar there. So that may be one, either darken up the branch a lot and lighten up the bird, which is the case in yours, move the branch over, remove the branch altogether, also a decent option. Um, I mean, you've got a few options that you can go with there, but I do like that you hyped up the contrast here. I like like all this little green, the green bits in here. I think that looks great, but look at here, your green bits here and your green bits here, you're using pretty much the same color. Well, these green bits are in a shadow they'd be darker than the ones out here where the light is hitting it. And that's the same thing here. Yeah, there are those light well, highlights, which you've got on the reference photo, but these ones are in a shadow. You hyped up the contrast of the shadow, which means you've got to all, you know, you darken the shadow. You have to darken the rest of the, sh what else is in the shadow too. But you're doing good. You are getting good contrast, but you, you want to now start paying attention to where that contrast is because the wrong place is still not that helpful. You know, it, it can draw attention to the wrong area. This is, it's still, you did a great job. And then this guy, let's look at this one. And I'm going to do the same thing. Crop it, crop your work. You can either crop your work or take a photo on something there. You can go to Amazon and get, now look at the crop here too, the angle. This is going to be skewed and distorted because it is not straight on. You can see how the, the photo is like out at the edges. That's going to skew the drawing. So watch that when you take your photo too, make sure you're like centered just right. Let's go ahead and blow him up. I'm blowing it up 130 to 130, so it's I'm making it out of focus um, just because I'm I'm enlarging it bigger than the actual photo. So this one, it's not quite as dark. I mean, you you can go a little bit darker in some of these. You don't have as much contrast. I think that you could definitely. We can almost. Let's see. Let's um, adjust the curves. I think fast way to do this so let's darken the darks well already look what a difference that made it's much more interesting to look at because look how faded that is now i know you said this was a value study but look at the difference let's pull up some of the whites i'm gonna darken that even more look at that there or there which one is more interesting this is a good example of the importance of hype up the co contrast 
in the right place, of course. Um, but it's really good. And this is back to the case of the branch in the back. So let's, oh, um, you see what the difference there. But the branch in the back here, look how the bird just blends in. He's being lost in that branch. So he doesn't feel like he's the focus as much to me. He needs, he does need to be, his head should be a little wider back here. But that branch, I would just take it out. Leave it out and darken up the contrast or, you know, darken up the darks on the bird so that he stands out more or move the branch over or something like that. Like you need variation there, but it's weird to have like this weird branch just centered kind of with his head. So that's one I would, would move or remove. But you're doing good. And I, this one, I really, I love the darks here, but you've got to darken the, everything that, if it's darker because of the shadow, you're going to have other things next to it are darker too. Okay. So let's see, was Callie's more, or new, finished. Gosh, words are hard. I am tired. I hope I'm on the right post. I may or may not be. Okay, here's Callie's finished one. So we can go ahead and, and look at Callie's. Thank you for posting that. Oh, that is amazing. Holy wow, that's good. Like that is just, I don't know that I'm gonna have, well, we'll look closer, but I don't know how much advice I'm gonna have for you other than photographing your work. That is impressive. Like I would be thrilled to have this in my own portfolio. I love so much about this. Um, let's go back up to your reference. Okay, you said, it's from Pixabay. You said you went a little pale, that's why you made her skin more pigmented in your eyes. It's a Prismacolor colored pencil on Hansen XL Cold Press, so that's a rougher paper. It's 11 by 15 inch watercolor paper, first piece where you made it look remotely realistic, wow. I know some of my values are off, but can you give me some tips of things I should fix or darken before I finish it? Well, not before you finish it, because, you know, I'm a pain. Let's go ahead and compare these two then. Okay. And... I love, love, like, okay, so it's not like super super realistic you've got a more illustrative look or you know with the, the high contrast of the shadows and the hair i like that though and this is going to come down to personal preference i love how dark you made those darks in her hair i but the highlights are the right color like you've got the, her hair is the right color you just you basically took this photo and made it your own and i love that her eyebrows are a bit darker. Usually with eyebrows, you're safer. Go a little lighter. Um, usually eyebrows are going to be a bit lighter than the person's natural color. Usually, oh, maybe not hers. Hers have been filled in. Well, hers are filled in with makeup. But um, yours are a little bit over-exaggerated. Actually, a lot over-exaggerated with the eyes and the eye shapes. So watch that with the eyebrows. Um, the nose, the way that you've got it shaped. And so now I'm getting nitpicky. Now as a standalone, like you obviously aren't doing a commission on this piece. You found a photo, you made an amazing, amazing looking um, portrait. So now I'm just getting nitpicky on portraiture in general. But like I said, this is like, this is seriously stunning. And most people, like I would still include this in my portfolio because most people aren't gonna see the reference photo. They're just seeing your finished work, which is impressive. So um, let's go ahead. And so her eyebrows, look at the difference in the shape of her eyebrows. That's the thing. Your shadow here on the nose, you pulled yours, it's rounded. You rounded that off and that changed the shape of her nose completely. If you look here, it's, I mean, you've got a curve, but not as much. Here, you've got the darkest line here. You go in a little bit and it lightens up. So yeah, it almost is rounded, but it's a lighter thing where yours is, is not quite. You want to straighten that out a bit. It's, it's right on this, the other side. But um, let's blow this up, actually. I don't know why we're so small. That would be something. For the eyebrows, like I said, watch that you're not going too dark, but you're good there. I think it looks great. Let's get the arrow out of the way. Um, her face, over on this side, you've gone really, really dark. She's a little bit more rounded here. I mean, and I'm talking minor things when it comes to the drawing, if the drawing was accurate. You said this is the first thing remotely realistic you've done, so it's hard to judge too harshly on that. Um, 
just watch the initial line drawing. Like her, she's a little bit more soft in her curves than what you've got there. This highlight on you on here, like you played up a lot with the colors and the blues and such. Same on her face. This highlight here, this color doesn't make sense. That should be like a cooler bluish gray color right there. And she's also got that, that highlight right along this edge. If you look at that reference photo, there's a little bit of a highlight there. It's not just straight dark. Um, let's see. Okay, lips. Watch the, the lips. Now, it's getting weird because so many people are doing lip injections these days. And so their lips aren't a real natural shape. And it's like they're curving in a weird place. So it does get a little weird. I don't know with her specifically. But I do know that, that we're starting to see kind of a weirdness with like in Instagram models. Models. Um, they're all fake lips. And so it starts like getting weird when you do portraits of a lot of them. But see how dark this shadow is here? That's not where the dark would be. Um, there, it is a little dark there, but not as dark. You would typically be a little bit darker in here than there. That's, I think, a little, like I wouldn't quite go that dark there. The shape of her lips is a little bit um, exaggerated. Like here, see how wide this curve is? That would be narrow. Like the, the bow would be brought in a little bit more. So it's not like not a it's like a happier more extreme smiley face than a wide smiley face if that makes sense um so watch that on the lips i like the shading the bottom lip the shading on the bottom lip is perfect i love that um so here's a difference see how you pulled up you may you you change their her expression which like i said it's fine because you're you're not doing a commission for somebody but when you do get to that point you do want to watch this see how you changed her expression by taking this dark curve up that isn't at all on the reference photo there's no curve there at all that doesn't even belong um right in those those shadows right in the corner of her mouth um i would just remove the like i wouldn't include that um yeah shape of the eyebrows like i said the shadow there but you're really I mean, I can get, again, I can get nitpicky on on things that are not super, super accurate on the drawing, but there are also so much that I love. Her hair is my favorite, favorite part about this. Like, I love the hair in the background. It just that look is so, it has a watercolor feel. I was actually surprised to see that this was colored pencil. It looks more like watercolor to me. Um, the, I like that you hyped up the purples in here. So you've got these beautiful colors, but you've got to get that in her face too. Like, pull up some of those, the blues, the highlights and stuff that you've got there. You are doing great though. So yeah, that's really, okay. And then the other thing that I wanna talk about on this one, look at two things, your signature. That's gonna get covered in a mat. You put a mat on that, the mat is gonna overlap the edge of your drawings. Now, if you're working on a canvas, no, even with a canvas, you've gotta watch that because if it, the, the customer decides to frame it, some of that, the just the edging is gonna overlap on top of the artwork. So here, you're, when this one, in this case, a mat is gonna overlap even more, your signature is just mostly gone or peeking out from under the mat, doesn't look good. Get that signature instead, you're gonna to wanna to pull that like, here along the like up a lot like or over here but pull that up quite a bit bottom bottom corner don't try to hide your signature your signature is part of the value of the artwork people are going to buy things and especially if you keep more style like i would consider this more stylized like a stylized portrait it's unique buyers love that that's a good thing i, I don't know that you necessarily need to change your style in order to be more realistic either and i don't want to give that impression because this has a very stylized feel that i absolutely love and would be so proud of I, I i'm not good at stylized stuff so i have a lot of respect when it is stylized but um your signature matters your signature is part of the value of the artwork when people buy your art they're buying the art and they're buying a part of the artist that signature matters. Make sure it's where it's not going to get covered. And then the other thing, when you photograph your artwork, your, yours is the same thing. You know, and this makes it hard for me to judge where I'm saying like this needs to, you know, um, perspective. Because this is being taken to where it's moving away from me, it makes it so that her head is actually smaller and her shoulders are wider than what it is if it were, if you pulled it so it's not laying kind of flat, but pulled it straight up at the camera angle. Um, watch that, that you get that very, very even. Now, the exceptions for me, let me pull out, I think I did this on, there was one portrait, one of my favorite portraits. Uh, one second. Oops, wrong, I should pay attention to where I'm opening. Um, portraits. Where do I have portraits? Portraits. Taylor. 
this guy. I took photos of him. This is one of my favorite, favorite ones. And look at how I photographed this. So now here's an excuse on, on taking a photo that is not straight on. But I posed him with the artwork and on the table and the paintbrushes. And it's obviously going to be a bit skewed in this case. Like it's set up at a, you know, that is an excuse to have your artwork not straight up on. But in your case, yours really is straight on. So let me pull on a straight photo. Is this the finished one? I like when I can't tell the difference between my finished art and the reference photo. I did a good job. Anyway, um, look at the difference here. This shows you how skewed that painting is. This one on the left, that is accurate. That's what the painting looks like. That's what the reference photo looked like. Look how much more of his, the top of his head you see. Whereas this one, I actually think it looks better than the other one, but with the paint and the paint brushes. But look at the, um, look at the difference in the shape of this man. He looks like a different person almost based on the angle that you take your photograph. And yours is not as extreme, but still it, you're, you're going to be skewed in some of that if you don't have it straight on unless you want to do like I did here with this guy where it's obvious it's at an angle and it's, you know, posing with the, the brushes and the paint and all of that. So it's more of like a promo type thing. But watch that when you take the photograph of your guys' artwork. If it's at an angle, make sure it's obvious and not that you like. Like, I wouldn't want to just crop this. Like, that would, would be, I've seen people do that where they're like, okay, I'll just crop the edges and you can't tell. Like, now it's all the painting none of the edges okay but that doesn't change the fact that she's still skewed like you can't tell that she's skewed you would just assume the artist painted her that way but she would actually be considered skewed somewhat um, because the camera angle is not right with the artwork i hope that makes sense gotten just to, to show you um again and i think this is one of the best examples the difference between these portraits angle versus not it looks like a different person and that's not a super extreme angle but it's still look how big of a difference that makes so yeah that's um watch that and this one too i love this one because like when i, I talked about before the one where it was a photo on the chair and i could see your toes i can always see my toes in my photos that i take straight down too so it's gonna happen just crop that out but if it's if you want the rest of the table or the rest of the, the things showing but here look at how it's got a pretty wood table it's got the art supplies it's got you know it it, it looks better it's not just sitting out on one of my patio furniture chairs now it, it doesn't mean i can't take the chair the photo on the patio furniture but if i'm going to do that then i need to crop out the patio furniture because it's not the same as like a pretty wood table or you know a brick wall or something that that is more intentional okay next and thank you callie for posting the updated one of that and cooperating with me not knowing what in the world i was doing um who is next What? I miss that. Kelly is 13. I'm, I'm not going to lie. I am jealous of where your skills are going because you are already like so that that's impressive. Good, good work there. You. Oh, my gosh. And try like this would be my tip for you. Try to maintain some of your your stylism and like that's the way you did i would, would call it very stylized stylism i'm making up words again stylized look maintain that like learn to do things more realistic it's the more you can do the better but don't lose that look because it's a very unique very it looks like it's intentionally changed and different in a way that trust me buyers and viewers are going to love you took that photo and i think you improved on so much about it and i don't think like don't feel like you always have to make everything look super realistic sometimes like in your case i think it yours looked better i love the hair oh my gosh i love the hair so when you get to where you keep trying to improve and you keep keep adjusting your style as, as you you grow don't lose that don't feel like you have like it's not realistic enough so it's not good because that's not necessarily the case some of my favorite artists do things that are super super stylized so just throwing that little tip out there okay we did that one we did that one our cute little bird frog this is from nikki sigmund um this was a client request goal was a piece for his frog room wanted his frog on a mossy branch 
Another info was given, like large leaves, wanted it to look like it wasn't in a terrarium. I don't think it quite hit the mark, but not sure why. Pastel, eight by 10. Pastel mat, did have issue with the paper not accepting much pastel on the right lower edge of the painting. Apparently I got a bad, bad reference photo below. Okay, so let's go ahead and look at what you did. This looks like a photograph to me. Holy crap, that is not a photograph. What do you want me to, it's, how do I judge that or like critique that? Let's go ahead and open that. That is, wow. I actually want to show this because mainly because I like what you did in your coming up with a mock-up. So that's what we're going to focus on. I don't know that I'm going to have much in the way of advice for you. So mock-up for computer idea. That is the way to go. Computer, scroll. And then here's the frog from the reference photo. Okay. So we've got that on the, the mock-up, so we'll, we'll go ahead and take that. Okay. So. Oops, I'm going to open up too many things. I've got too many things targeted. There we go. I just want you to. Wow. I have nothing to, like, there's nothing that I would say needs improving on this, and I know that's not why you submit, you want advice. What I want to do is use you as an example of why a computer mock-up, why drawing something out like this and figuring out how things should be positioned, and then what you can turn that into matters. Look how she took leaves. They're terrible. She did a terrible, this is not a good Photoshop job. She did what she needed to do. I forgot the name. Is this a she? I'm sorry if I'm using the wrong thing, but she did what, we'll, we'll go with she. Um, she did what she needed to do in order to see wh where the balance was, where she wanted to place things, what she wanted where, and how to, you know, the layout of all of this. That is absolutely, this is what, one of the reasons, seriously, Photoshop guys, learn Photoshop. And I know it can be overwhelming. And I mean, I remember when I started with Photoshop, it was like, Oh gosh, there's too many options. I don't know what to do. There's so many Photoshop tutorials online and you don't have to be good. Here's an example. Now I'm not saying, April, oh, April Sigmund, there we go. I'm not saying April's not good at Photoshop. I'm saying this is not a good job of Photoshop because you don't have to do a good job for a mock-up. I don't do a good job on my mock-ups. I can do photorealistic paintings with Photoshop but I'm not gonna do that on a mock-up. There's no reason to and this is an example. She didn't need to do an amazing job. She needed to get her layout and she got what she needed and then took that into the artwork and oh my gosh look even the shadow under the frog her light like there's i don't have any anything on here that i'm like i would change that i i love love this i love what you turned that mock-up into um i like that like even your whites like your reference photo isn't great like i think that's too white on the toe um where's my arrow come here trusty arrow this here, I think, is a bit too, like, too white right here on the toes. Not on yours. You tone them down with a grayish blue. Perfect. Th that's really nice. Now, one thing you might want to do if you want them to be a bit shinier, you can pull more blue in that shine there, more of that transparent blue. But it's not even necessary. It looks fine without it. Um, but you could make him look glossier by including a little bit more there. Um, and just a cool gray or even a teeny, teeny, tiny bit of blue. Um, we'll help that, but I've got nothing. That, that's, I love how this looks, so I'm helpful, aren't I? I just want to show show people what you can do with a mock-up, and it, like I said, it doesn't have to be like this amazing, some, like I'm not going to post my crappy mock-ups online, like, so it doesn't matter if people are like, wow, you did a bad job. I know what I'm doing with the mock-up and what I'm going to turn it into in the artwork, so I'm not going to waste time making that perfect. I'm going to do that in the artwork, so that's great, great work. Okay. Um, let's go on. Yeah, so was it, I just missed who said it, but when art beats real life, exactly. Uh, oh, we're frozen again. And then scroll too far. Ooh, this is a good one too. Is that, who's next? We've got Marissa Whitset Baker. So this is, let's save that. Uh, 
Um, I'm hoping to improve my portrait skills and not panic over skin tones. I'm much more adept at animal and still life. The portrait is done on Strathmore. 9 by 12 Bristol Vellum with Prismacolor Premier. And unfortunately, I no longer have the reference photo handy. It was commissioned as a memorial as the gentleman, oh, I'm sorry, passed away. My goal for this one was to capture the likeness and execute a decent skin tone so I could honor the couple in the portrait. Oh, you did find it. So let's go ahead and save this. Oh, I like yours better. I like the highlights that you pulled out in your skin tones better than what you've got on the reference photo. So right there, I can save that, I think is an improvement. Let's get these, you and you. So small photo, which is hard to work from. So yours is kind of the same thing I, I was talking about earlier with getting some more of the reds and pinks and peaches and some of those colors. And now I have a tendency to over hype, to like hype up those oranges and reds just because it's a look I like. So you don't necessarily need to go as far as I go with that, but let's look at the color just a bit. I think the photo, it looks like it's accurate, but his teeth are way too white. That is, is one thing. His teeth are too white and the shading around them is too shut. Like there's too much contrast there. So that is one thing that I think could be um, improved on. So let's actually just look at the teeth really quick. So his teeth, way too white. Actual teeth color, way darker. Now, maybe in this one, because you did brighten up some of the other parts around the face, you may not want to go as dark as what his actual teeth are, but I would still darken that up a lot more than what you've got. And then that shadow, see how your shadows are just like black? Usually on a shadow, you're going to have more pinks and reds, like or browns in this case, than straight black. You'll have some areas like the darkest corners here, yeah, but when you get the shadows around the teeth, it's not usually black, not usually brown. It, it ends up having a bit of a cartoony look just right in there so watch for that here's another one look right here on his beard let me see if i can hide it, it's going to get blurry but we it's still so small i don't think you guys can see it all look right here the resolution is really little on this guy this photo okay skin tone right in here right next to his nose and his beard are you I don't know if that mount the eyedropper shows, but right in this section, let's get my handy arrow out actually. Where did my arrow go? Ooh, that arrow was big on that size of photo. Let's minimize you a little bit there. Okay. And then come back over here, get you down there. We'll just throw you over there. We don't need you yet. I love the snow, the snow in the background. I wouldn't change a thing. That is so perfect. Okay, right here. See this area right in here? That's actually his beard comes here. This crease here, trying to make faces here, that's skin. That's not beard. And your, or, or mustache, it looks like on yours that this, the mustache went up right around his nose and beards don't do that. My husband loves his beard, like I think more than me. And he... The, so yeah he's all you know I, i'm watching the beard and where he trims stuff and he's so proud of himself for how he trims it so anyway that is my my expertise comes from my husband's fondness of his own beard but there yeah that would be normal skin there you're not going to have a, a mustache come all the way up to this area i mean i'm sure there might be somebody who does that but it's not a com it wouldn't be common so watch for that um Let's see, same thing. Like your contrast is too much, I think here. It looks like the beard is too full and his is, is more, it's the hair hair on most men, it's gonna get a little bit thinner in many cases and especially in his out here. So watch it, that's skin tone right here more. And this is the same thing on yours. You've pulled that part of his beard and his mustache, you attached it. There's a shadow, but it's not beard. Um, and it looks like, so the beard is, is kind of taking over there. Um, the from the shadow like the shadow should be a little bit of a different color than the the hair there so look at here skin beard look at the there's a difference the values are similar but the color is is where they the real changes and so in your case that would be something that i would watch for the other thing watch whenever you're painting or drawing hair whether in the same with the, the eyebrows here eyebrows or the beard look at how we've got dark and much lighter really dark then when it gets a little bit lighter where the hair is darker or sparser i don't know seriously tired right here the eyebrow we've got it really dark 
then it gets a little bit lighter. Whereas yours, it's kind of the same. All, it, it doesn't change that. Well, I guess it changes a little, but it's not as much like, see how it's so much darker here and then it's kind of a lot softer out there. So I would soften out the outer edges here and then fix where the, um, the skin is showing on, on the facial hair there. But I think this is good. I would probably shade her neck a little bit, um, darken that a bit so it's not quite the same as, as her, her skin tones here. And then going back to skin tones, look at here look at the pink there is her cheek look at that it's kind of that peach color that would be like i think dark flesh or cinnamon with the polychromos would be that color here we're just a lot lighter there it's much more um desaturated with the color so you can can hype that up a bit i like that you brightened up the faces so i wouldn't necessarily change the values on the face but the color saturation i think i would improve like include more here see how around um here she's got this pink this rosiness around this the top section of her, her cheeks in here i would would definitely do that the other thing watch the lips so his aren't as extreme I, a little bit but hers especially look at the difference in the skin like the lip color is way darker and pinker like you've hyped up it she looks like she's wearing lipstick here and here she looks more like chapstick so you know watch those edges that they're not so harsh soften up unless someone's wearing like heavy heavy lip liner instagram models um you're gonna have a softer transition between the lip and the the rest of the skin tone like just soften that out just a bit um there we go so i think that's it but i love the background oh my gosh i love that i like what you've done here with this okay a little bit here a little bit more tips here this line can come in look at the difference here yours kind of all comes straight down so they're they don't have the same fold as here where it kind of curves inward so a little bit of a difference there that's just minor nitpicky but those are little things that you can adjust that will make yours that much more realistic realistic but i think you did a good job of capturing their expression the drawing is excellent these are you know fairly minor little things that you can adjust to improve on your future portraits but good job there so let's do one more and then we will wrap this up. We've got Dini, Dini Casas Edwards. This is Tobias, a nine by 12 stone hinge paper, fabric castell colored pencils, a few luminance and Pablo's Derwent drawing Chinese, Chinese, or it says Derwent Chinese white, I'm guessing Derwent drawing. Titanium white powder with touch up texture. Oh, you use all my favorite stuff. And I've been drawing for two years and I hope to continue developing my skills and leaning towards realism with a touch of my personal touch of style. Well, it looks like you're doing an amazing job. Let's pull these up. This one should be pretty quick. I don't think, wow, that's better than the reference photo. Okay, let's save that. This is, wow. I love portraits and I mean, I don't do it on all of them, but I always like the look like lions up against fawn paper. So it's like the kind of, the background colors are similar and I like that you chose the fawn paper with this. I think it looks great. I know that sometimes people get scared of doing it because it's too similar. I think it can look amazing and that's what you've done here. So let's pull this over. Take a look at these. Oh, this guy's so cute. I love doxies. Okay. I don't have much. This is, I mean, like you said, you wanted it to be, have your own touch, your own style. There are a few minor things that are, this is really accurate though. Your pencil strokes. I like how they look. I like, he's a little bit rougher. Like he almost, that is one thing you watch. He almost looks like a wire hair versus a smooth coat just because there's a little bit more of a roughness with all of the, the pencil strokes being forced in. It, but it does give you that more stylized look, which may right there be what you're looking for. So usually when I'm doing a dog that's super sleek, I'm gonna soften like an Italian Greyhound type fur or that sort of thing. I'm gonna soften out the lines a little bit more than what you've got here. But it works with the stylized, I mean, it has that stylized look you said you were going for, and I can't say anything negative about that. I really like that. Now, do watch. I don't like where you signed this. Wow, how's that for nitpicky? Gosh, his nose looks amazing. Um, there, the, actually, we've got two things. I'll, I'll, I've got two tips that might might look good so your signature down here if somebody mats this you're going to have this weird outline this weird glow around the dog ideally if i matted this i want the mat to go right up against here 
which means I just lost your signature. So instead, I would either put your signature over the dog right up here where it won't get chopped off by the mat or over here where it won't be chopped off by the mat. But the mat, this is going to look best if the mat is cutting off where the, the coat ends versus weird floaty triangle kind of draws attention weird. So your signature, not going to show. Um, and like I was talking about before, that signature matters. That signature is important. Um, don't worry, Bobby. What I'm going to do for, um, you, I know you said yours was so close. What I'm going to do, and Phyllis and everybody else, I'm going to do these again. I love doing these types of critiques. It's more fun to kind of interact with you guys and, and go through a lot of them at the same time um, than one a week. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop comments, I think, on that post and just go through it and I'll eventually get to everybody who posted because we're actually doing good getting like I don't know last time it was like 20 or 30 I think we made it through so I'm not sure how many we did tonight but we will get through to these um I definitely want to go through through a lot of those watch that you protect your paper too it looks like you've got some indents on the artwork there in weird did your puppy chew on the paper? It kind of looks like it on the edge there, huh? Um, but watch for, for that. But like what I was saying with the crop, I'll just show you. Like if I were to mat this, this is where the mat would chop. I would lower it a little bit there. Probably pull that in just a bit. So because I like where the eyes are lying on the roll of thirds there, that is where I would crop that. And in which case, we just lost your signature. Get that signature, you know, get that in there. The other tip that I have for you is on the highlight, you can add a little bit of a cool, like a mild, barely, like the, the lightest blue, almost more of a cool gray that you can find. You can include that just a bit on the highlight on the nose, make that stand out a little bit more. Um, it's going to give you even more of a three-dimensional look there. But that's, that's really, I don't have a whole lot of tips for you there. Um, or besides that, I, I really like a lot about this. And like you said, you were going for your own, you know, having it a more stylized feeling. You, you definitely captured that. Really, really nice work there. Okay, let's see. We've got some comments. Let's see if I've got anything I'm missing. Oops. When can you put paintings for critique or how and when? Right now, I'm not going to accept any more. I'm going to end this current thing because otherwise that the right now it's already so long. It's really hard for me to find the post to, to do the critique. So I'm going to stop comments currently on that post over in our art group. When I open it again, you guys in the art group are the first to know because that's where I'm pulling these from. The link to the art group is in the video description. Also, the links to our moderators tonight, Valerie and Joseph, who I'm pretty sure probably had to work a little harder than, nor than normal tonight for various reasons. Um, they are, check out their channels. They both have great art channels here on YouTube. So you definitely want to check them out and subscribe to them as, you know, big thank you for helping me besides the fact that you would actually want to subscribe anyway, because they have really good channels. So definitely head over and check that out. Um, let me see. Um, Alicia said, this may sound extreme, but I'd love to see this against the, a black background. It would work against the black background, but you would have to hype up the shadows in the dog in order to make the black not like, whoa, that's black. Like right now, he's very light in color, but it works because the background is so light. So if I were to create a black background, actually, let's show you what that would look like. And this is what I love so much with Photoshop. We can find out. So what I'm, whoops, what I'm going to do is enlarge this. I'm going to do a really crappy fast job here, so... Forgive me. Um, I'm going to leave the crop where I've got it because I actually like that. There we go. Okay, I'm going to, this is what I like to do to, to um, change the backgrounds. And there are di so many different ways to get to the same end in Photoshop. The way I'm doing it may not be the best way. It's just the way I've always done it. So, whoops, that is not what I wanted. So that is what I'm doing. I should duplicate the right layer. And I'm gonna add a solid, you said a black background, so let's find out what that would be like. And this is cool because we're gonna be able to see what this would look like with multiple colors very easily. And this is why I keep telling you guys, learn Photoshop because when you, I just did that wrong. Because when you, um, let's soften this by one. 
when you have a client who's like, well, I don't know what color I want for the background, you can show them different colors and they can choose before it ends up being an issue in your artwork if something was a little off. I just cut part of that off wrong, but whatever. We just, we're not making it perfect. We just want to see about what this would look like. I'm totally deforming this poor guy. Okay. Not the best job, but we can see what that would look like. So he's a little bit too light for this dark of a background. So in this case, I would probably, um, let's adjust, I'm gonna be lazy and just adjust curves. I would wanna hype up some of the, these colors are wrong. This is actually totally wrong. But I mean, I would want to get the darks a lot darker in order to make that work. This is a terrible example. Um, I would do this in Lightroom. I can adjust the colors better. Like I would d drop down the darks and raise the lights and, and make those changes there. I don't think I can easily do that. I don't normally make those edits in Photoshop. Let's see. Um, image adjustment, exposure, curves, levels, brightness, con well, maybe this will. Yeah, kind of. That's not right. Lightroom, I'd be able to, to mess with this better. Um, I It can be done to an extent in Photoshop, but I'm terrible at it. So anyway, yeah, I mean, you can do, you can see what these colors would look like. And here's the cool thing. I don't have to chop it up again. How about red? What's it look like with this guy? You can try every color to see what he would look like. Oh, that white looks, or like that off kind of gray color looks amazing. I really like that too. Too white. I actually liked the more muted gray. Um, you can try everything. If the person's like, hey, I've got a blue couch, what would it look like against blue? Let's find out. What would it look like if I put stripes? Go download a, a pattern with stripes and put that behind him and let's see if that how that looks. You can try so many things. Let's see what it looks like if it matches his eyes. That looks good too. I mean, you've got, look at all of the options. Everything that you can do to, I really like that color with this. This is probably my favorite. I think this grayish tone looks amazing. Not that the off-white or the, the fog paper doesn't, but dark blue, what you said? Um, it was too blue. There's dark blue, or let's say it may be a dark grayish. He's gonna look better with kind of grayish tones, but there you go. Um, you can try anything when you use Photoshop like this to see, do I wanna make those changes in my artwork? Now, I'm not saying any changes should be done here. I think that I, I would call this finished, but I would do that sort of change to the reference photo before I started to get make sure I'm making what I think was going to look the absolute best. And like I said, I really like that gray. The font, now the, the flip side, the font paper sped up this process so much because she's able to let the font of the paper show through. So I understand why that choice would be made. So in this case, maybe airbrush the background, a, col a solid color would, would get you a solid color and still be able to take advantage of the fawn. Um, and that would give you that nice, soft, smooth look. You can use colored pencil. Oh, it takes so long. So I understand why someone may not want to do that. You can just get paper the color you want. But anyway, that gives you some ideas on what you can do when you're doing portraits, especially pet portraits, where you're changing the background. And the client is like, I don't know what color. There was another. Actually, let's pull up this horse, Louie. I think I've still got photos. If I don't, I have it on my other computer where I was messing with the backgrounds to see what was gonna look best. I took the photo and this was on one of our recent Patreon videos. Um, oh, I don't know which one it would have been. Let's find out. Hold on, let, one of these might be the one that has all the backgrounds, but I can't tell. One second. That is a big file, whatever. Okay, good. I opened the right one. So with him, I wanted to try different backgrounds. So I cut out the horse. Let's remove all of these backgrounds that I tried before I decided what I thought looked best. We'll just start from all the way back. I mean, look at all of these I was able to try because I had no idea what I wanted it to look like. 
And this one I got to choose because it was a gift for somebody else and um, it was just my choice. So I knew I, I thought I wanted those circles. So I, I kind of Photoshopped those in there. Nice fuzzy background. Meh, not my favorite. Oh, that was a different photo of the horse. I, I was going back and forth between two angles of the horse too. Nope, didn't like that. This one's for my giraffe, though. I don't know if you can see it behind me. That painting, wanted to see with that. Nope, didn't like it. How much better was it for me to take the time to do this in Photoshop and find I didn't love it than, like, what happened if I put a damask line? That one's not terrible, but didn't love it. That's not bad. Um, what about this color? What about that background? What about a snowy background? Look at all the things I could try. This one I really liked, and I used portions of this one in the end with we'll move our way up wanted to see well what about like cherry blossoms that was a bit too extreme so i gave ended up going with a hint i really liked that one and i liked the idea like the hint of i just photoshopped a bunch of stuff together until i got what i liked and what he ended up looking like in my final final one is this so i didn't copy it exactly but i got an idea of what colors i might like you can see I hyped up the red in that quite a bit. Um, but yeah, I got an idea of the colors that I wanted to use based on adjusting all of those other values of, of adjusting everything. So um, being able to edit that, it's just such a like powerful thing for making the choices before you get to your artwork, before you mess anything up, you get to find out here just by cutting things out and putting different colors, different anything on there. It makes it so easy to see what's going to look best. Um, yeah, Gail says she votes for the original background color of the dog. Yeah, and that's the thing. That's definitely an option. That looks great. It looks amazing. So, I mean, you've got you've got so many options. Find that out and maybe find out that that was the choice. Maybe you were thinking, well, I kind of was thinking about changing the background color, you know, once you got to this point. Find that out before you do it to the artwork because you may have changed your mind. I now can show you what that would look like in a different color so yeah photoshop is just such a huge huge thing for figuring stuff out before you make a mistake on your artwork or something that you can't easily go back and change but um yeah this is great great painting thank you guys for joining so much thank you for uh, submitting your artwork to be a part of this i hope you guys got some tips that you can apply for your own artwork even if yours wasn't included and like i said i'm going to close the comments on this post over in our art group but when i open it up it will be for those in our art group uh, um, over on facebook so make sure if that is something you're interested in that you're a member there if you're not a member already and you join make sure you answer the questions if you don't answer the questions like to to get in you don't get into the group we just assume you're a spammer um and read the group rules can't stress this enough please read the group rules before you post in any group any facebook group read their rules every group has different rules and it's not there because we want to be jerks and think it's fun to set rules we're doing it to try to you know keep everyone happy and keep everything running smoothly our group is very active um it's not one where you post and you bail it, you're not going to get a lot of attention that way our group like you end up being friends with people you, you want to comment on people's posts. You want to be a part of that, but read the rules. They're there to keep everything running smoothly, smoothly like that. Um, but yeah, that is it for tonight. Again, thank you so much for joining. And um, we will definitely be doing these critiques every so often because it's, I like these personally better than the edited version because we can go through a whole bunch all at once. And it's stuff that's more, more um, recent. So let's see, read and follow the group rules. Yeah, picks by Lisa, exactly. Um, Eric said, won't I open it again when we get through this? It'll be several because I need to see how far we've got so many submissions already and I need to get, I want to get through those before we open it up and I'll probably just make a new post when we do go through. But anytime, if you're in the art group and you want tips on your artwork, make sure you ask there, you're not allowed to give people advice on their artwork or criticism unless they specifically ask. And if somebody asks for constructive criticism, please give them your opinions on stuff. People want that help. And it's hard for a lot of people to get that kind of advice. Like I would love to give everyone advice, but I don't have time. Um, that's all I would do. And I wouldn't get to even sleep anymore. So definitely, um, you know, help each other out, give each other some, some constructive, constructive criticism, but only if someone specifically asks for it and big part of the rule, don't be a jerk. 
or of the group, if you're a jerk, we just remove you. I don't need, I, I have, I'm not one of those who's like, oh, they're a jerk, but they've been in there for a while. You keep being a jerk and I will, rem like, we don't tolerate that in the group. It's a very friendly group. We want to keep it that way. So, you know, read the rules, join us. That is it for tonight. And I will see you guys next week. If I can find the stuff to stop the stream, where are the buttons? Buttons are hard. There we go. Okay, now I'm stopping. Bye, guys. <laughs>